Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I'm here to talk about and review Catch Me If You Can! This is a 2002 film that was directed by Steven Spielberg, and it's based on the true story, believe it or not, where we see Leonardo DiCaprio as Frank Abagnale Jr. He's this young kid, 16 years old. He comes from parents, his father, played by Christopher Walken, and his mother. You see that their relationship, their marriage, doesn't quite pan out the way that he would like. So DiCaprio, sort of based off of this, he goes off on his own and just somehow, some way, using not only his charm and his intellect, but his resourcefulness, he starts to embezzle checks. He starts to forge checks. And he somehow, over the course of a couple of years, steals, I think it was almost $5 million or something crazy like that. And so we follow Tom Hanks's character, Carl, who's this detective. He's trying to catch DiCaprio. So the whole movie, Catch Me If You Can, is Tom Hanks chasing after DiCaprio, years and years of DiCaprio somehow getting out of his grasp, somehow not being able to 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 subvert all of, all of these resources that Tom Hanks tries to use and and it's a fascinating movie it is i very much enjoyed it not just for the true story aspect of it yes a lot of this is you see certain scenes you see dicaprio's character get away with all these situations all these moments and how he outsmarts tom hanks so many different times and it's mind-blowing when you see just how almost easily he's able to do it so yes that's fascinating because it's real but not just that, the way how the story was told, we took the time to, the beginning of the movie you do see, quote, uh, I mean, it's a true story, so it's not like I'm really spoiling things, but just in case, I'll say that we see how this story ends at the beginning. It's one of those things where you see the end, uh, I think 1969, and then you go back in time and you see the beginning. And you get the backstory of DiCaprio as a kid and him and his father, Christopher Walken. He respects and looks up to him. Christopher Walken has a lot of these characteristics that DiCaprio ends up adapting and doing what he does. And so that's fascinating. But, you know, the movie really kicks into high gear when DiCaprio does go off on his own. When he you realize he's just 16, 17 years old and he's finding ways to use these checks doesn't really have any money but he's he's pretending that he's a co-pilot with these airlines so he's putting stickers from the airlines on the checks and making it look real and having everything that he wants to buy or go and do get endorsed through these banks and he's he starts to become like a fugitive in some senses and there comes a point in the movie, because DiCaprio is so good. He's very likable. He's very, like, you're almost rooting for him in some senses, even though he's doing a lot of wrong, messed up stuff. But when you see that he has enough money at one point to probably live, like, I'm talking about cash. He has, like, two briefcases full of cash. And you see that he's good. He could probably live off of this for the rest of his life. But he gets so cocky. He gets so greedy. He gets so like, well, I'm just going to keep doing this because it's clearly working. He is his own worst enemy. Not only does the continuation of forging more checks help reveal to Tom Hanks where he is and what he's doing at that point in time, but every Christmas... Every year on Christmas, he calls Tom Hanks. He calls him because he doesn't really have anybody else to call. So it's sort of sad in that way. But every time he does do that, he reveals. He accidentally reveals more and more of where he is or what he's doing, giving clues and hints to Tom Hanks. And that gets Tom Hanks going. Tom Hanks, I obviously enjoy in everything that he does. His accent was very interesting here because there was a lot of instances where he sounded like Peter Griffin from Family Guy. So that kind of made me laugh but also uh, um, the supporting cast I guess let's talk about you know Christopher Walken like I said plays the father he has some really great scenes and great moments with DiCaprio he plays a guy who yeah he'll, he'll protect his son but he knows the path that his son is going he knows that ultimately there's nothing that he can say or do to stop him he's been there he's done that 
Elizabeth Banks has a quick moment as a bank teller that the Caprio suite talks and gets info on checks from. Jennifer Gardner plays a hooker who they're seeing where he runs into her in this hallway and she can kind of tell or at least he has the appearance that he has money. The way how he somehow finagles her to think that he has a real check that's endorsed for 1400 and he somehow uh, she they they come up with a price for a thousand for the night but because he has a check for 1400 she says look if you just give me the check then we're good and he's like well the check is more than what we agreed to okay she says i'm gonna give you four hundred dollars in cash if you give me the check so he says perfect <laughs> so basically jennifer gardner's character paid DiCaprio $400 to have sex with him. That, I just, I howled with laughter. I hooted and hollered. I just couldn't believe that even if a fraction of this is true, it's still insane and hilarious. Martin Sheen plays the father of Amy Adams. Let's talk about Amy Adams. She's somebody that DiCaprio meets at this hospital that he starts to work at. There's so many instances where DiCaprio changes his name to get another job or, or, or to get in good with a connection someplace. He uses the alias of Barry Allen at, at one point, who is the Flash character's DC superhero name. And then he uses uh, the name of Ian Fleming when somebody suggests the James Bond movies to him, and he goes, oh, okay, I can use that name again. Fascinating. But he meets Amy Adams' character, and she's a little dorky and geeky at some point. She has braces, and he uses that to get in close with her. But he seems like he really does fall in love with her. And to see their relationship and how much she didn't know and to see where that goes, I thought was interesting. Look, I can talk about this movie. I can keep going. I do feel like the more I talk about it, the more I'm just sort of spoiling things or talking about moments that happen. I guess I feel a little bit better about it, though, because it is a true story. It is based off things that really happen. Maybe you guys know about it. Uh, I, I like the chase. I like the aspect of it. But also the ending of the movie you know, blew my mind. <laughs> Because, really, that happened with these characters and DiCaprio's character? Like, really? That's his fate? Wow. Just wow. I enjoyed the performances. I enjoyed the acting. I enjoyed the pacing of it. It's, it's close to two and a half hours long, but I was never bored. I was super into it the whole entire way through. I recommend, if you haven't seen Catch Me If You Can, definitely check it out. Uh... Let me know in the comments below. If you too have seen Catch Me If You Can, you probably have. I'm probably the one, let's be honest, who's late to the party. Let me know what you think of it. Did you like it? Did you love it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later! Ryan Litzman. <laughs>